start talking about science, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, so my parents named me Lewis after the Scottish Western Isle where they still sacrifice goats to appease the sun god. <laughs> yeah, uh, my parents actually, well my name's a bit of a shit pun in their part really, uh, because my big sister's called Isla. So when you say our names together, it sounds like Isla Lewis. Yeah, it's not very funny. But, um, but uh, you know, I'm just glad I never had a little brother because they're rapidly running out of island themed names and the only ones left were Egg, Muck, or Rum. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, so I'm a physicist and uh, like any good physicist, uh, my goal in life is to, well it was up until about two minutes ago, it was to get something named after me, and now I think it's going to be, well, to be honest, I want the beeping condom to be named after me. <laughs> yeah, you know, I really don't care what it is, just anything named after me would be great. I mean, it's quite hard nowadays, all the good things are taken, you know, gravity's gone, all that sort of shit, so, uh, all easy stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, I wish it was like back in the day where it was, uh, you know, people like Newton could literally, you know, walk down the road taking a walk through your country or state one day and they might say, oh, what's that big thing over there, you know, it's black and white, it's, uh, poops a lot, got four legs, goes, Mrrr. well, that now, if it was Newton that saw it, it was a Newtonian methane producer, it was not a cow. <laughs> So it's, it's a bit hard nowadays because everything in physics is done as part of research collaborations and as groups. So if you want something named after yourself, you have to come up with something batshit insane that no one else wants to go near. <laughs> uh, so uh, you may have noticed uh, just about a couple of months ago, physicists discovered something called the Higgs boson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty awesome, but uh, Peter Higgs uh, was a physicist from Edinburgh postulated it in 1964 and it only took 48 years, hundreds of billions of pounds worth of international research money and the world's largest scientific penis extender to find it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the Large Hadron Collider, if you get a chance to go there, don't bother, it's a sausage fest. <laughs> You know, it's going to be quite hard to get something named after myself. Uh, I was a bit shit in maths in school, so I'm not going to come up with any new theories. So, you know, going down the physics route is probably a bad idea. Um, <laughs> so I thought, you know, instead of coming up with a unified theory of physics, why not, you know, just pay ten pounds and fill out a form to change your name? So I thought to myself, what name could I associate with myself that would mean that when someone Google's a fundamental law of physics? They don't find what they're looking for, like Wikipedia. They find the drunken picture of me in a night out, you know? <laughs> and so I thought, you know, there's a certain name around the west end of Glasgow, if you guys noticed it, you know, it's everywhere. It's more common than chlamydia and amongst the cast of The Only Way is Essex. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I thought, you know, I'll name myself Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> or Kelvin, of course, uh, being one of the chaps who invented thermodynamics, uh, helped lay the first transatlantic cable, and also had the first house in Glasgow with electricity in it, and that was only 1988. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I thought, now that I'm Kelvin, I should really discover a few things, and uh, so let me look at my lab book here of awesomeness. This is my real lab book. And I should say, I should say uh, my PhD is in biophysics, and uh, I only started my PhD about a month ago, so I don't have any groundbreaking research to tell you about tonight. To be honest, my research at the moment accounts for six graphs, um, a broken camera lens worth £5,000, <laughs> and a mild addiction to coffee. So, um, so this discovery is going to have to do. Now, people of the front row here, uh, I can observe you. I believe that you exist. I'm not a philosophy student. Um, you <laughs> uh, that's uncle. What's your name? 
Stephen, and I recognize you from Reddit. Yes, uh, well, that's a lot bit creepy, but yes, that was nice. <laughs> but it's nice to be able to meet you. <laughs> uh, so, um, Stephen, I have to say, well, you've observed me, I've observed you. Um, I've discovered you. Uh, your name is now Kelvin, you've got this badge. See this, people? Oh my goodness, it's just like mine. There you go. Uh, hey, sir, you're from Reddit too, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what's your name? Neil, so as well, you're called Kelvin too. There we go. Uh, hello there, ma'am. Can I ask what your name is? Aileen. Aileen, lovely name. Well, I would say that you're called Kelvin, but I've run out of badges, so um, your name is now Minty Badger. If any of you are wondering where I got that name from, uh, I actually got it from the Horrible Histories TV show. It's a valid source of scientific knowledge, so enjoy it. Um, yes, let's see, so what am I talking about? Oh yes, names, names. So I figure, you know, why stop at naming people, Kelvin? I thought, well, here we are in the Stand Comedy Club, you know, the only venue in Glasgow that could survive a nuclear apocalypse. So um, clearly this guy has some problems with radiation, you know? So I figure, yeah. I'm going to propose this to the management of the stand that we actually change the name of the stand to the Kelvin Comedy Club. Well, I've enjoyed that so much. Uh, that literally took five minutes in Photoshop. Um, I think he looks quite pensive there. Um, but if any of you are wondering what this X ray lol bit is about, uh, Kelvin, one of the greatest physicists of all time, actually believed that x-rays would turn out to be a hoax. And uh, as you all know, that's complete bullshit. Um, but uh, it just goes to show that to be one of the greatest scientists of all time, you don't always have to be right, you just have to have an awesome beard. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, so I'm doing biophysics now. I'm looking at ways of imaging uh, arteries and veins in your arms and legs to find out signs of diabetes. Um, and, uh, but I originally did astrophysics as my degree, so um, I'm a wee bit out of my comfort zone going into biology, you know. Uh, astrophysics is what some people would call a sexy science, you know, it's, well, you probably don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going by my high school geography's teacher definition of sexy science. Um, uh, anybody from Stream Academy in tonight? Yeah, two people. Do you remember Mr. Gavin? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> had a definition of sexy geography that was things like volcanoes and pretty much just, well, maybe glaciers, but volcanoes mainly. And so he thought, you know, things that were big, hard, uh, generally made a mess and took thousands of years to come. Uh, so astrophysics is not like that. Astrophysics is, you know, asteroids and stars exploding, sexy stuff, and going into biology is like, well, it's just a little bit shit in comparison. I mean, literally some biologists study shit. Uh, you can't deny that, it's a fact. Um, some people make careers out of that. Um, but uh, this transition's been a little bit hard for me, but um, I, I've got a lot of material to go through, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut right to the chase. Um, right, uh, this last part of my set tonight is called Equation Bingo. And I'm going to show you three equations, okay? And I want you to shout out bingo if you recognise them and you get like bonus points or something if you naturally know what it is. Right, so. People, can anybody, does anybody recognise this equation? Yeah, so that's the energy mass equivalency. That's the equation behind nuclear bombs and wifi cushions. Um, this second equation is a bit harder. I expect only the physicists in the room might know it. Um, can anybody tell me what this is? Maxwell's, Maxwell's equations, yes. One of the most beautiful and fundamental equations in physics that determines how light and electricity work. It's pretty awesome if you're a physicist. Um, my friend has actually got this tattooed on his arm. And, uh, it's, you know, we never actually find out if it was Gene to sit next to him in an exam. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I said to him, you know, why'd you get this tattooed in your arm, Liam? And he said, well, you know, it's beautiful, it's fundamental. And I said, well, why not just get a tramp stamp like everyone else? <laughs> Right, now the very last thing I'm going to leave you on, right, this equation is close to my heart. 
I found this equation my very first day of my PhD. My supervisor gave me this tome of physics, tome of biophysics, and he said, Lewis, read that, you're going to learn something. I thought, well, this is going to be pretty fundamental. It's going to, you know, the next three years of my life are going to be taken up by whatever equation I see on the first page of this book. And uh, this is this equation. Does anybody know what it is? No, I don't think so. <laughs> be surprised if you did. This equation determines how light travels through boobs. <laughs> now, there's nothing funny about breasts. There's nothing funny about boobs, sir. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is the sort of thing that gets used in, uh, like, a uh, diagnosis of breast cancer. So if you laughed at this, you laughed at breast cancer and you're all sick fucks. So, on that note, I shall leave you. Good night!